All set with the zoom. Thank you. Roger. We're floating around in auto XY here, so it's not stable. Well, I can at least get some. Forty percent. Yeah, I wrote down in the uh, in the big log where that was. I think thirty-five when we were still on deck. Oh yeah. Hmm. It all came out of the starboard triclops and went into the Herc bottle then, so. <laughs> which makes Jonathan ecstatic. Dan, I don't know if you heard about the. We have a single laser. Um, yeah, I did. So okay, Roger. did we write that in the uh, OBS? Did we write that in the book? Uh, we are H2011, I believe. Roger. Today's date is the 20th. Just notate uh, OBS crashing on October. resolution change. So I'm going to stop using it for now and uh, stop changing the resolution. Take over the okay. Very helpful, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was I going to write? Oh, one laser. One laser. So I got a question in the chat about how deep can the ROVs go? And I think it depends on the ROV we have. So right now we are diving Hercules and his maximum depth is 4,000 meters. You should ask Rennie about his world record breaking Atlanta dive. <laughs> He the broke three records in a row. Oh, in yeah. In several. We had 5,500-meter um, dives. That was recently for the um, three World War II aircraft carrier wrecks that we did, the Kaga, Akagi, and Yorktown. Um, there's probably a recent highlight um, kind of covering all of those if anyone wants to go look at that online. Uh, but we managed, to, we managed to drop down on each of them right in the center, dead center, um, of all three at 5,500 meters, it's a point of pride. <laughs> <laughs> the max step for Atalanta is 6,000. Is that correct, Remy? That's right. And so is it, um, but we never t really go and push the ROVs to the maximum. Why Bo is that? Those dives were, those were the, I believe, the the uh, OET record depth. Were they not running for Atalanta depth? Definitely for Atalanta. I don't know if Argus has, uh, in the past, had gone... Um, that deep. I, yeah, and I don't think Little Herc's gone that oh. deep in a long time, but it maybe it has historically. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> One of the limiting factors uh, on that deep dive is so we had, uh, you know, 5,500 meters of cable hanging off the back of the ship, and the weight of that cable was around. Uh, what was it? Fifteen is um, fifteen thousand pounds is our max uh, working load, and we were right at that uh, at that max uh, radian. So the A-frame uh, on the back of Nautilus and the overboarding ship uh, all have a, a weight rating, and then the cable has a, a rating. And because we're on a ship, and that's a dynamic number. Uh, and it gets significantly uh, higher when the ship's going up and down uh, due to the waves. So that that's close that out. one of the big limiting no, factors. Out that, web page. that and it takes forever to get down there. Um, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, um, I'm gonna just lay down some tape on this a little bit for for calibration purposes, um, and then. I, uh, I would like to do the light change, uh, cycle through the different lighting scenarios, including all off with this. Dan, did you just copy what I... I copied all that, sir. All right, um, so... Uh, Dave, did you copy all that? Because you got some fancy instruments over there for the uh, lighting uh, tests. Sure, I just can't Roger. see his camera very well. Um, okay, yeah, sure. Say the word, my friend. All right, just hang on. I'm gonna get all the cameras. Oh, see. Let's switch over to uh, command line mode. What do you think about that? 
Doing start stop reports. <laughs> I can hear Rachel in the background when Jonathan suggested command line run. Command line moon. Rachel's like, yeah, command line moon. <laughs> Give her a clackety keyboard, Joan. Yeah, yeah, I've I've not touched the controls up here uh, in what seems like hours. Hey, uh, Dan, can we please get a uh, hard reboot on just the Triclops? You can keep the Ethernet bottle up. Roger, is that, uh, is that Magnum kept into the picture? Has that been there all the time? Ah, uh, that's Magnum. That's OK. That's helped me orient. Roger. Yeah. Um, so is that, uh, sorry, I'll multitask here. You want Triclops system off, right? Yep, power off 15 seconds. Power it off. And then come back up. So while it's off for 15 seconds, is that the same issue we were seeing when I was starting and stopping record of the stereo cameras that one would lock up? Oh, that's correct. Yeah, and I think that it's actually what's happening is we're we're trying to output a signal that since OBS doesn't like it. Uh, it's actually giving yeah. feedback to the camera and locking up stream one, that stream one out. All right. So, again, this is why we went out. I started looking for that NDI solution after we observed this. So I was seeing that, and that's the exact same issue that you see if we were using the stream deck and displaying the stereo cameras that's of correct. the motion JPEG stream. Yeah. So we just, we, we need a we need action on the NDI tonight. But, uh, I was, so when I was experiencing that, it wasn't the camera actually locking up. It was, okay, that's 15 seconds booting back up. It was only the um, the browser window, and it took me a while to work it out, but if I would refresh the browser window, indeed the stream would be there. The camera itself wasn't wasn't uh, the no, issue. This is, this is a different problem. It's actually the camera that's locked up right now. 100%? It was. Sure. Yeah, I'm not in a browser window right now. Yeah, but it might be doing the same thing to OBS. So OBS gets mad when the stream starts and stops, and you have to then restart OBS. I did restart OBS. Yeah, so same issue, different program. So it's no, it's 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 not it's not recording, Dan. It's a different issue. It's locked up the camera. The stream is going somewhere, and another client that it was being sent to has locked up the camera. But that's why we're, streams aren't supposed to be used like that for stream one. So the the workaround there was it locked it up, but I was very impatient, as I often am. If I would wait 30 seconds, it would then uh, release, and everything was happy. And that was repeatable 30 seconds. Yeah, it's that's the API. It, it has a 30 second. Where's 212? What what gave me the if you put a minus T in there and keep those windows open, ping minus T. So what gave me the clue was um they were pinging the whole time. They wouldn't I wouldn't lose uh communication with the camera, I'd just lose control of the stream. Yeah, I did the same thing. It was pinging but I still wasn't able to control. And did you wait thirty seconds? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>
It was a feely 30 seconds. Oh, it's yeah. Well, I mean, unit. that's actually super true, right? Like, I think yeah, I waited 30 seconds. I don't think you waited 30 seconds. should have asked the data logger. <laughs> Got me off 30 seconds. It took me I days to figure that point. out, Jonathan, because I was like, what? Why is it doing this? Uh, you know who it was? Who did I have with? It was Danny who noticed it because we had the cameras open on the bench. And uh, you could see on the camera, it was happy. It said it was recording. And he could see the live image on the camera, on the little LCD screen on the camera. It never froze. And he was, you know, waving his hand around in one camera or the other. And indeed, okay, so we went back and looked at the footage and it was there on the hard drive. It was just a stream that was freezing. Go. Recording. He's not listening to me. <laughs> He's got to figure it out for himself. Okay, so I started recording <laughs> on it. We have uh, both fisheye lenses at eight millimeters. Um, and That's awesome. the NTP link successfully uh, picked up all three cameras on record. So can I and make we're a... we're at 6KP29.97, which is correct. Can I make a suggestion? Uh, yeah. So you don't have to listen. So since that's a known bug, and that would happen when I start and stop record, can we not, is a possible workaround just to leave them recording the whole time? No. Why do you need to stop recording? Because we're collecting calibration data right now, but um, at this point, we want to actually observe these bugs as they pop up. Right and here, at this yeah. point, the calibration, um, at this point of the calibration, I really want to just get through running and cycling through the lights while we still have a, a nice cliff face. So. Right but in normal operational mode, wouldn't we start recording when we go off deck and record the entire dive so we would never stop recording? Uh, negative. So what, what these cameras, they're such a specialized system. Um, these are recording at 6K at a data rate of almost 600 megabits per second. So um, at that data rate, to do a full recording for a full dive, you'd actually only get uh, one hour and 25 minutes out of a four terabyte SSD um, recording constantly. The, it's a big difference between uh, a camera system like see, Zeus that, that science is running that is meant to be recording 24 seven right. um, versus something that was really purpose built to record only you know, those exceptional moments, or in the case of the photogrammetry, it's actually only taking one frame every three seconds. But mm -hmm. again, since we're kind of doing this as a test dive, our shakedown here, um, I just want to be able to start, stop recording, come up with any bugs that do pop up, and then solve those right. bugs on the bench. Yeah. Okay, Understood. I'm just going to, I'm going to do a quick introduction here. Uh, Time-wise, we have about 40 minutes on bottom. Um, according to our current plan, if we want to extend that, we, we can discuss with Jason. But as is, we should be off bottom around 7.30 p.m. and on deck at 8 p.m. Gotcha. 8 a.m.? 8 p.m. So, I'm good uh, for a.m. Dan, right now <laughs> while we have the lights on, can you please turn off all the lights to start? And uh, Turning off all the lights. Atlanta, don't, what's our current... Uh, uh, for the audience and for video, don't panic. I'm turning off all the lights. Roger. Atlanta, what's our current uh, height above ROV Hercules? Uh, 19 meters. One nine. And uh, Dan, would you be comfortable with lowering Atlanta to about half that length? TJ, if Atlanta hits Hercules, you've come too low. <laughs> okay, uh, bring it down to stages. Uh, I can come. Yeah, come on down. Sorry. Mate. Come down. Yeah. Yeah. Coming down to 15 first. Uh, just come down nice and easy. Nice and, nice and steady, nice and slow. Right it's quite nice. Uh, Zach, I'm, I'm just continuing this record. We should be seeing this uh, lighting feature just slowly come up as Atalanta comes down. And TJ, would you mind actually counting off the delta, or I'm sorry, the standoff distance as we come down? Okay, we're at 16 meters, one six meters. Okay. Got One it. five meters.
<laughs> that's really awesome. <laughs> that's BBC lighting there, yeah. buddy. <laughs> I'll do your uh, oh, I'll that. do your look choke at, camera. Keep keep, uh, keep going, TJ. Okay. Single digits one four, all the way. One four meters. One right four. It. Correct. One four meters. I'm uh, descending at a rate of uh, between five and six meters. Yeah. Wow. This is what this camera system was really built for. Um, low light. One twelve center. meters. Twelve meters. Twelve meters, right uh, there. One two meters. Got it. One one meters. Oh. Off, off. So we don't have a. Sorry, that was me. What? That's all right. We don't have a spot to put them. They took the starboard box off. Yeah. Uh, by the way, my record. I have a new record with Atalanta on the carrier dives. <laughs> okay, that's uh, leveling off at one zero meters, ten meters. Ten meters. Just copy that. Uh, you haven't lived till you've done single digits, TJ, and you, you can only do that when the weather is gorgeous yeah. and the current's favorable, which it is. I just want to get through all of the lighting things, and then yes, and we have 40 minutes on the bottom. Okay, Dan, if you're happy, I'm happy to come down lower once they uh, let me once they Let me finished. get Jonathan's attention there. Yeah. I don't know if that helps him. Now you got a giant shadow of her yeah. from Atalanta. Hey, Jonathan, are you there? Yes, I am. What's our distance now? We're uh, single digits now, just hovering nine to ten meters off the deck. If you're, and uh, as you can see, there's a giant shadow there of Herc, which is really cool. It's really cool. If you're happy, uh, we're happy to, we have favorable current and weather to come right down behind Hercules here. Yes, please. Here we go. Okay, coming down again. So we're gonna, what, get right right next to it? We're gonna land Atlanta. Okay, nine meters. We're gonna go negative delta, baby, negative delta. That's what I wanna see. And uh, one of the elements I'm curious of and uh, this is uh, a nice to have, seat. not a need to know, <laughs> or a, not a need, but um, if we could swivel around Hercules 180 to uh, counterclockwise to actually get the lens flare. Can do. So let's see if we can see Atalanta. I'll have to go uh, clockwise for my tether there. I'm going to tilt up just a bit, yeah. not to freak you out. Eight meters. It's okay, pretty cool eight, to see Herc's shadow. Eight meters there. That's You're fine. Uh, you got 24 meters underneath Atalanta, so we yeah. can indeed go negative delta. We're on the hill here, so it's, it's uh, no drama. I do it all the time. Yeah, I'm just looking at that tether going, o going over me. Yeah, we'll, we'll sort that out later. Okay, eight meters. Twelve meters. Yeah, you can keep that's, coming down nice and easy. That's okay if you want to keep that on the Atalanta. Uh, we'll come down a bit more. Gotcha. We'll come down to par. Wow. We have 20 meters underneath Atalanta, and yep. the weather is flat calm. It's, uh, we're fine. Yeah, I wouldn't going, do it if we weren't. Seven anywhere. meters from her. Six meters. Right, yeah. Five meters. And so uh, you can stop there. If we come down any more, uh, we'll actually lose Herc out of the light because nope. of the. I'm fine if you just want to swivel around and uh, Zach, if you could just record that we're going to be uh, facing Atalanta's lights directly, and we're just checking for the characteristics of the lens flare at this point between the three different cameras. So you can see there, Jonathan, okay. the light, the light circle of Atalanta. So yeah. you know, Hercules is kind of half in the dark there. Yep. So if you really want to blast it with Atalanta light, we actually got to come back up a little. Let's so just swivel as come steady around. state now and then. What a great view of uh, Hercules' thrusters working. A very rare sight. Come on, Dan, am I okay to zoom in there since uh, this is a rear? You can zoom in just a little bit, yeah. That's good, yeah. Just watching that tether as well, yeah. so. I'm uh, watching the tail cam. Mm. Okay. Where, 
Where, are, tree where meters. are you going, Herc? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're going up. Herc decided to float up. I didn't tell you to float up. I'm going to turn off your auto heading. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that to me? I'll come back down All here. Right, right. We had a one meter delta there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, seriously, do go negative. Let's, Let's just hold here just for a hot second. Holding. Yes. Not sure why it uh, lost its auto depth. Yeah. All your auto depth went off, eh? Uh, huh? I don't know. I'm going to go to auto XY and see what's going on here. I just switched out to native ISO. Oh, that's what happened. And uh, yeah. ISO 400 at this point there. Say that again, sorry. Um, just uh, went to native ISO, ISO 400. Or just looking, I'll look at the noise characteristics of the lens from this. Have you swung the craft manipulator out there into the breeze on purpose? And uh, I'm going to do the same thing now for starboard. Okay. So I can turn an auto heading, and you can adjust how fast that happens here. Right. Yeah, so the steps are 15 and the speed, the velocity okay. is 2. I'm good with that. We can uh, turn around, let's face the rock again, please. Hey, right and uh, cycle through our lighting. Uh, we want to just notate our current standoff distance from the rock itself if we can, Renny. I'll give you an exact distance. <laughs> Navigators work in uh, 100 meter squares, but <laughs> Rennie can lean over and uh, look at the sonar here if he wants to. Yeah, I was just looking at the mezzo, but the the uh, sea prints will be better, obviously, or sea king. You know what I figured out, Rennie? We so always, you know how we always discussed whether these uh, max velocities were uh, meters a meters second or knots? Yeah, or knots, yeah. You know why they change? Why? The joy gain depending on where you have the joy gain. Oh. Like I can slow down if I'm doing auto XY. If you can I slow down with the joy gain? Totally. That makes, that's a, that seems like a bug <laughs> and not a feature. <laughs> it only took me five years to figure yeah. out that feature. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if you're trying to match the ship speed of 0.3, we think it's meters a second, um, and you have 0.3 <laughs> dialed in there and you're going too fast, instead of playing with that number, you just joy gain down in it. Oh. Very interesting. I wouldn't have thought the joy game would have. Okay. Uh, you set up there, Captain? I can't I can't hear you. Are you? You're muted. <coughs> yes, sorry, I'm set up. Alright, can we just start with uh, all on and uh all mark on. the time Zach, please? Right can we confirm standoff distance quick? Uh standoff distance is a two meters 2.5 meters yep. somewhere between 2 and 2.5 depends on what part of the cliff you look at if you see this sonar here uh, between tj and i yep. those are two and a half meter uh, range rings and the sonar that's making that measurement is uh, roughly well it's pretty much right next to the cinema camera Rennie, what would you say my uh, lateral distance from herc is on that or 20 meter divisions yeah, Raj, give me uh, 11 meters. Yeah, you can take this one just if you want. No, right. just on the sonar. Oh, on the yeah. sonar, sorry. Yeah, I, I have uh, I have a thir 13 on All the nav, coming and on. then on the sonar... I'm guessing around thir yeah, 13, 10. Yeah. Or 20 meter 15, divisions. Yeah, 20 meters in the... In the yeah. <coughs> you going to do a little measurement? Sure. Okay. I'm trying. Yeah. Oh, it's not on that. There's a tape measure icon up on right, the top. Can we yeah. let's search uh, turn off the forwards, please? Turn off, sorry, what? Turn off uh, forward. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I have upper, mid, and... Upper? Uh, I actually inadvertently turned the starboard and port on. I don't know if that makes a difference meters. for you. 11 yeah. meters. Yeah. So those are the uppers off, Jonathan. And okay. I, I did indeed adjust the mids, as we talked about. If you can see on the side of Hercules to the left there, they're poking out. Okay. I oh, know. Maybe those are the downs. Okay, let me... Can I cycle them on for a second? Oh, uh, yeah. Go ahead and cycle them on. Zach, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. Reset so... The schematic. Uh, 
that one sticking out to port is the one we moved for Norbert. Yeah, which one was it? I think it's the mid. It was the mid, sorry. So the mid light, uh, remember how we had the two mid lights that were pointing inward yeah. to make that hot spot? And then there's two close in on the vehicle pointing outward. So the two that were pointing inward are now readjusted to point outside the little uh, antler window of the of the uh, bumper bar. Okay. And we did that because we had to move that light anyways for an orbit. So that's what you see there in uh, Atlanta with the light poking out the side. Awesome. So that's the mid lights only. Okay. So let's just do uh, all on and uppers off to start. Uh, so that's the mid lights on. That's the disruptors, otherwise known as the down lights, which we typically don't use unless we're uh, landed and zoom, zooming in because it lights up all the flock in the water. That is the starboard and port on, now blinding Atlanta. And the uppers are still off, and obviously the aft light is off. Now that okay. was shining my Atlanta eye. So we can turn off the port and starboard lights to start. Port and starboard are off. Can we turn off the full, uh, upper lights? Upper lights have been off. Okay. Um, can we turn off the mids now? Mid lights off. So That's just the down, right? Correct, just the down. Okay, can we turn on the upper and the mids with no down? Okay, so that's down off, don't panic. That's this Atlanta ambient light there. That's the uppers only. Takes them a minute to come on. They're different, um, uh, two that, different versions of lights. Is that all the uppers? That's just the uppers, yeah. So that'll be the four uppers, two on each side, two on the port, two on the starboard. Yeah, I'll just get that, Zach. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, and then finally, let's do mids only, please. Okay, let's see, uppers off, and the mid lights only. Okay, um, so second request, let's extend back out the uh, tray. Uh, Roger. And I just want to see at what point we're uh, occluding these uh, lenses to see if we can, once they're back on deck, Dan, we can see if we can get this porch out without uh, having light hit. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's quite rapid. Um, okay, so could you, is, uh, I can, I can bump verify, it. verify what lights are on for Zach here? Us. Currently, I have the only the mid lights on. Okay, that's all I got. Can we do all lights on to start? We'll restart another lighting scenario so with that's uh, uppers, mids, and out. down porch lights out. on. Porch out 18, 18 inches. Okay, got it. Okay, so this is with, uh, let's just start with the down lights off, please. Okay, down lights are off. No change. <laughs> Mids off, please. Uh, mid lights are off. And the cameras you can see in the Zeus image are not being uh, illuminated anymore. Yeah. Uh, okay, well that's all I really need to know. Uh, let's just do one fancy test. Uh, let's turn off all of the lights, ex uh, except for the starboard and the port light. I'm kind of interested to see how much that illuminates to the port and starboard with this current forward view. Right see if that. enough light. Upper lights are off, and starboard and port are yeah, on. Yeah, no. That'll be good for the ground, but not this. Um, okay. I'd say um, maybe the final... How much more time do we have, Rennie? So, uh, 20... 20 minutes. Okay. Would it be possible? Let's uh, retract the retract the porch. Roger. Porch in danger. That's just what the button says. Depending on what we have on there, that can be catastrophic. Uh, and then, if I can, uh, I'd like to start at the base of the cliff. And uh, let's move the magnum and the craft dip out of the field of view, if possible. Roger. Can I turn the lights on, or do you yes. want to do it in the yeah, dark? Yeah, you can, you can turn on the lights. I'm going to stop recording <laughs> as well and get set up for this. You're going to have to reboot. Okay, uppers and mids is what I typically run with. Okay. 
And um, I don't think I can oh, do yeah, we much can take a for the Magnum. Uh, mm. Dan, that's a question for you. Uh, would you like to take the sample now or later? Oh, yeah. Let me talk offline with the pilots. Give me Rush. a second. Kay. Depends on what we. Um, what are you talking about? What do you want to do with this Magnum? Take it off the vehicle is what I want to do with it. Uh, just just move it out of this frame. Which to frame? To, to the uh, starboard, please. Can you just rotate it out? Uh, it should be all the way to the left. Oh. It is, so. That's what you do when you have 180 degree vision. Yeah. This particular manipulator wrist that wrist left. it has a 90. I might be able to wrist left a little. No, that's the wrist all the way to the left. Mm. It's okay if it's. Uh, I can poke the porch out a little bit. Just a little, and maybe it won't go in the lights. How's that for your lights? It's okay. It looks okay still. So you can just barely see the Magnum there and the, uh, I'm assuming that's okay. the port stereo camera I'm looking at. Yeah, let me just switch over to make sure we didn't blow. Can we go back by an inch or two? A bump? A bump. A skosh. There's a skosh. So you have a, uh, what appears to be a craft in the other, and the craft another, is... Another skosh, please. Uh, in or out? In. Right. The craft is indeed uh, 90 to the right at the moment. Okay, that's okay. That's a good enough view anyway. Happy with that? Yeah, so I'm happy with uh, the discussion with Rennie about the sample. My uh, end objective for this test is to go down to the bottom of the rock, get set up, uh, confirm the start of the transect, and just do a very simple vertical transect of this rock, and then we can leave uh, bottom and, and head back up. And uh, what... What was the deal with the sample? I lost the plot there. So, uh, Tom would like a brachiopod. I know we've got a lot of stuff on the brow and on the porch. Uh, if they request to get one, yep. I know that would involve opening the front box. Do we have the starboard box? Either? No. Uh, data, who's in the data seat back there? Okay, Jonathan, I'm gonna, uh, Roger. I'm gonna pull your cameras back in out of the way. Roger. Is, Zach, are you back there? Yes, I'm it's back here. Are you prepared to, uh, log a sample? We're, we're fine right now. Um, or do you need, I can, I ship's call not Taylor moving, and up, weather's uh, fine. Just to make sure, so I don't Normally we this, wouldn't get uh, this close. Uh, Roger, you'll have t Taylor in there. Great. Yeah. But, uh, this is... This is not normal. Okay, I am going to um, scare the hell out of everyone in the room. Uh, I'm going to uh, park my port uh, side bumper on the cliff here. Uh, yeah, just watch the Norbit, right? Oh, yeah, I got the Norbit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, let's actually watch it. Yeah, let's look at that thing. Where's that Norby? Uh, can you look at Norbit with bubble camera, maybe? If you could look up at Norbit with the bubble cam, it's on the port. I can, I can do yeah. it here. I got the. <laughs> if you click on that, anyway, hey, just perfect. click in the top of the window. Taylor Ann is here for sample. Roger, thank you. Yep. Just click the window, mate. Yeah, there you go. Why are you not going? Taylor is going to swap me here and sit back in, so talking with her. Come on. Oh, is it just going to be uh, just out? Yeah. Yeah, it's just above the. I don't know if I can see it with the uh, Zeus. Got a lot of jewelry on this vehicle. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was uh, a <laughs> little. Okay. 
Uh, where'd the brachiopods go? Where'd they go? There's a few in front of you, but those are easier than the cluster. Uh, one is half a dozen the other. The cluster's okay. fine. Okay, Roger. Okay, we're either going to use uh, the Norbit or the stereo camera to park her gently on the cliff. Hopefully it will hit on the... Uh, that's good. Uh, yeah, okay. Are you... Can what's you, your, can can you, you come tilt up? up? Or? Stand by. Can you tilt yeah. up just a bit for me, uh, PJ? Sorry. No. No. Sorry. All right, you guys. Okay, that's no. good. That's good. <laughs> Sorry. I'm letting everyone know at home that what we're doing right now is we are going to try and grab a sample of some of these brachiopods that you see along the side of the cliff edge here. I guess we could also use the, what do you call it, the magnum to poke out if you think yeah, it's more proud than we the usually land on the magnum. Should yeah. hit, we should hit the uh, bumper bar here. That's what it's for. Yeah, I, w I didn't see the Norbit, how proud it was, so you would know better. It's It was designed to be able to do this in theory. Let's see where we touch here. How's your port stereo camera there, John? Are you looking at it? That's, that's going to be Norbit, I think. That is, uh, this is our uh, starboard stereo, and port is danger close. So danger, yeah, I, danger I, I, close. Yeah. So it's normal. Let me yeah. come up just a bit here. Yeah, I don't like that. Good call on switching that view. So what makes sampling this a little bit difficult than our normal, right? We normally collect samples all the time, but what we've changed some of the cameras around on Herc. And so because of the cameras that we have on there, we can't do our normal easygoing uh, sampling. How about up? They, uh, Lounge is saying we're okay to abort here. We don't want to get too close with everything, so. Uh, Roger, I'm, I'm gonna, I can stick the uh, Magnum out there and, and uh, touch on that if you want. Yeah, we can give that a shot. Unless Lounge says otherwise, I think that that would be a, put a, put a arm bumper out. Just come in uh, way, way gently here. Might come up a bit there. Uh, hopefully the cliff will kind of go away. Touching the multi beam. Uh, let me try a different angle here. Stay, Herc. <laughs> uh, what's our cameras? Okay, yeah, give me right. some light. <laughs> How about some down light action? <laughs> mm, camera's fine. Can, can, is it possible to have the Norbit in the view? Because I know once we turn the craft on and move things around, I don't want it to bump up against the wall. Yeah, it's possible. Let me uh, just get some telemetry to the manipulator here first. And <coughs> so this one time, uh, I was getting this beautiful video shot of a flange pool, and uh, we were doing a survey. And uh, I parked the R2 Sonic into the flange pool and just cooked it. <laughs> <laughs> 
that was my first sonar. Second one, uh, we were getting a major, which is a real challenging dual arm thing. And we were parked in a thermal vent and had the sonar uh, mesotech in there, cooked it <laughs> right through the penetrator, flooded the housing, and <coughs> boss was not impressed. But we got the sample. Uh, okay, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, we're light years away there. Look at all that room. Hotting up the craft. Uh, I'm gonna just, I have another camera here to look at my craft manipulator. Here we go. Boom. I think we're also racked forward if that. We are. If that helps you. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, brachiopods are quite delicate. And I have snaggle teeth on here too. You can see the ROV shuddering as it's holding station. Um, go back to the H cam. I forgot about my um, look down cam. I can see what the manips are doing the whole time, Randy. And yeah. the cameras. And the, so we put that camera really on there yeah, just right. for that. Um, the camera that's usually on the uh, jars, the bucket cam, yep. that's the downward looking cam. So we're light years away down there. We indeed are on the left antler yeah, of a, Hercules. It's a really nice wide view. Yeah, I forgot all about it. It's usually not on there. Uh, Dave, can you zoom in for us, please? So many brachiopods. Any particular... Uh, I don't believe so. I'm just going to uh, play with the uh, jaw force here for a minute. And, uh, it wants to snap open. I'm going to try and set it to the lowest setting where I can still close the jaws. That's grip force two. That's grip force one. So we do have an issue with this guy where he snaps open rapidly uh, and closes slowly we've we've struggled to get it um, where the grip force one works so in theory yeah. but still have the you played with the craft before uh, a little bit but not a huge amount so one of the challenges of this arm unlike a shilling um, as I squeeze the trigger here to close the jaws, um, they keep moving. So I gotta, I gotta vary the uh, pressure on my trigger finger, the jaw close finger, to get them to stop. And you can go in a little tighter there if you want, Dave. Thank you. Maybe a little tighter. Yeah, perfect. I touched. Those were there. These are Robert's uh, favorite jaws, not mine. I can't quite get in there. See where I'm touching the rock there with yeah, the manipulator. Yeah, top of the jaw. Mm -hmm. I think so. My jaws are continuing to close there. I see. Is, is that? Uh, I don't know. If that, uh, does that constitute a valid sample, Taylor? Ant? Yeah, most of the tissue is still intact, and that's what we would need. You're um, after the, the tissue yeah. there? Yeah, and 
do we have any place to store that? We do. Okay. Indeed. Roger, uh, don't porch out yet because we'll we'll hit the camera. So um, I thought I could be clever there and not close the jaws all the way, <laughs> but then I was afraid of letting off. I would have then dropped it, so I yeah. opted to uh, mangle it instead of drop it. But we got it, and they're after the tissue, hopefully, so it's a valid sample. Uh, okay, um, Dave, can you go away for us, please? I'm going to rack the uh, Zeus camera back here in theory. Yeah, it's back on. And uh, just do a, uh, a quick bump out on the porch for me. Um, um, actually, stand by. I'll come off the cliff and then we'll do that. So there'll be uh, zero risk there. Okay. Okay, now you can uh, we'll run that porch all the way out there. Oh, watch out, there's Atalanta right there behind us. Roger. I'm going to, uh, since we're right close here, I'm going to show off a little bit and we'll spin around so you can see what we're doing in Atalanta as well. Okay, that's the porch all the way out, correct? Can you record a highlight? Yep, already on do it. Do it a four that says four? triclops on deck. I don't care about the clams. That's good on the zoom there. Triclops um, on deck? Yeah, on porch. So porch is all the way out. Okay, should be good to give the, and, uh, uh, go vehicle, the forward uh, box Atlanta. a bump, please. Switch out vehicle to Atalanta. There you go. Uh, or, correct, yeah, yeah correct. Argus? Yep. Right there. Submit. Submit. Yep. Uh, and, one more uh, bump. fire off another one, that's too. Good. Okay, here we go. That's a good shot. I'll take that. What do you think? Is it going to come off of the uh, jaws or is it going to give me grief? I'll just scrape it. Oh no. Look at that. Right. Oh. oh, come off. Get off me. Yeah, it's off. Our fish tanks are getting a little beat up, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can uh, close the uh, forward sample box. I'm going to swing the arm. Uh, did you have it? I don't like it hanging out there. Roger, and then you can. Um, what are we doing with the porch, Jonathan? Are we. Uh, rack it all out. the way back, please. And it oh, we had it halfway before, right? Yeah, that's correct. And I see Magnum's kind of poking out at like a 45. Yeah, I did poke it out. Sorry. Uh, I, I uh, used it as a perch. Nice. Uh, data, I just want to confirm that number was NA156-001. Yes, that's I'll correct. I'll Sample 001. Well down. And, uh, yeah, we had it, uh, we had it in, uh, oh, wait, I got to turn off my down lights. Where are they? There you go. That's good enough. I like that. Happy with that? Okay, yep. I'm going to run the uh, Zeus back out. All right, so um, what I'd like to do is uh, let's face the rock wall. We're going to go back down to the deck, uh, back off the wall until we can't see it anymore, and Roger. then confirm with me. I'll start the report. We'll fly towards the wall until we're at about a one meter standoff, and then report. Actually, that's way too close. Let's try a three meter standoff. Our standoff before, yeah, good distance, two and a half, three meters. Uh, yeah, it was two and a half, three meters, right? 
Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. So we'll do that standoff and then um, we'll just run a very straight transect going straight up the wall and I then uh, continue to recovery. After I can't the, back uh, up too far. I'm going to hit Atalanta. Can we, uh, do you want to change the delta on Atalanta or, or is this still for our test? Do we yeah, you can, you can pick it up a bit, yeah. TJ. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go down. Um, why don't you just step back a little, Randy? Move the ship 10 meters. Can do, Roger. Please, please move the ship 10 meters. Bridge, snap. Okay, Jonathan, I'm, uh, I'm five meters uh, away. Step 10 Light meters, zero, nine, zero. Thank you. Okay. Are we still zoomed in a bit, Dave? Well, uh, no, we were perfect. All right. Ranch. I just saw it go in the background on the um, yeah, we're good. port we're side. Good. Yeah. So we it should be all right. We can get away with this when the weather's uh, just absolutely beautiful, by the way. You guys just made, uh, made us look really good with the nice weather. We can't do that when the ship's going up and down two or three meters or four meters. I mean, uh, that's about two and a half meters off the wall there, Jonathan. As you can see, we are roughly four meters altitude from yep. the DVO, which is the back of the vehicle. But if I look down a little bit, we're closer in the front, obviously, because we're on a we're on a pretty good hill here. So that gives you a reference there. I'm looking down in the Zeus camera. Yep, I'm happy to start the vertical transect when oh, you. Yeah, you got you you got three cameras. What am I doing? They're all doing it. <laughs> okay, uh, as uh, as Dan comes up, do you want me to maintain uh, 11 meters delta, or am I uh, holding position? Uh, I think we got to do what makes sense with the tether when we yeah. come up, so we'll see how that goes. Um, let's wait till the vessel moves complete and let it swing out just a little bit. That way we won't get tether tangled up. But yeah, you're going to have to come up a little bit, TJ. Yeah. We'll, as we start moving, so all that we did, we were static. You know, yeah. Atlanta wasn't moving, Herc wasn't moving. Well, it wasn't moving very far. As uh, we start moving both vehicles through the water, that is going to become tether dynamic. So I don't want it to get, yeah. uh, we don't want it to get wrapped around the 6-8 there. <laughs> so we're going to have to come up a little bit uh, before I do. You can come up now a little bit if you want. I'm coming up to 15. Roger. Uh-oh, the boss is after us. Stand by. Uh, not quite. Close enough. Well, at least we got a clam. <laughs> Some nice footage, though, that I don't think you get to really see that angle of Herc very often. So, <laughs> yeah, the uh, it was worth it for the Atlanta shot. I'd say. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. So, Jonathan, do you want to tell us a little bit more of how you came up with this concept of this triclops system camera system we have? Yeah, sure. Okay. The um, you know, this whole system is built to visualize yep. the world in a different way. And all of this is because of uh, actually Dr. Dr. Ballard's vision. Zero and it's Delta. like it's continued drive to really reveal the deep water world to kids uh -huh. and future oh, scientists. Yeah. Um, ever since he started the Jason know, program over feedback. 20 years ago, and 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 even before that, um, and this is this is the natural evolution of that vision of, of being able to up. explore new ways to see the world, um, and in this oh, case, yeah, this so system benign. is built to do yeah. two things. One is to do pretty advanced photogrammetry, oh, yeah, so yeah, the construction right. of 3D <laughs> visualizations of uh, a static cool. image based no. off of what's called structure in motion, which is essentially just uses parallax oh, yeah. to no, it's totally uh, like, yeah. 
uh, was good for create um, yeah, to, to give data to algorithms that allows it to reconstruct what's closer to the lens and what's further to a lens. Can you well, explain what parallax is for us non-computer <laughs> uh, savvy camera Can we stand people? by on, on that? Just um, I, I want to just confirm what we're doing here operationally. So we're at the bottom of this uh, base here, Jonathan. We, yes, uh, Atalanta is now moved off and it is stationary. Um, I want to know when you're meant to lift up, just to, just for timing purposes. Um, yeah, we got, we're running out of time. I, I'm ready. I'm ready now to start the vertical transect. Roger. Um, yep. And uh, and we can get we back to that conversation in the uh, blue water if that's all right. Hi, Roger. You want to be uh, three meters away, do you? Yep. About that. This is great. And I'm gonna actually start. She's gonna yell at you when you. Uh, Hit record, Johnny. Oh, she was happy. Well, I don't have four screens oh, open. Okay, got it. Okay, starting recording, and uh, you can launch off at any time. Are we recording? Yep. That's from a fleet. Can I confirm what's the light setup we have right now? What's any? that? What's well, the, the light lights, setup? The lights, currently, I have the uppers and the mids and starboard and port on. Okay, thank you. Are you happy with that? Yep. I am. Thank you. Okay, I will now remove my hands from the control and uh, ascend the wall. I find it flies much better if I don't touch the sticks. And I'm um, I'm currently recording open gate open. P29 in ProRes 422HQ. Can you explain that in English, please? Uh, ProRes is a... Uh, Kind of the highest quality codec that we'll get out of these cameras. It's a very uh -huh. nice codec to work with, and codec is uh, basically how it's recording. Um, like H.264 is the old standard for yeah, compressing. I know what that is. Compressing video, yeah, and uh, ProRes is what a lot of editors will use um, because it allows you a lot more latitude to pull information from dark places and highlights that are blown mm -hmm. blown means like that very bright point right at the top of the image in uh, triclops right now that bright white uh, there's still some good data right around the edges and recording in prores uh, a relatively uncompressed codec allows you to rescue those highlights i see um how's the speed for you John? it's fantastic all right I mean, we're recording 29 pictures per second right now, so you could probably goose it as fast as it goes and it'd be okay. Uh, we're coming up about five meters a minute there, which is a happy speed for me. I could come up a little faster. Well, it's a good cool, uh, yeah. for looking at the video. It's, you know, like if there was a scientist counting uh, brachiopods. Or, I don't know. There's not very many. Maybe I'd want to go faster. Well, Rennie, you promised me a cliff, and here it is. It's a baby cliff. Baby it cliff. is a baby cliff. <laughs> we now approach the top of the cliff, as you can see. And uh, you can just keep on going up. Recover the deck. Yep. That'll be good enough to do the calibration files off of that All I right needed. Up. At least there's wanna, not a lot of marine snow anymore. You don't want to slide along it for a minute? Nice uh, no, I'm, that's right just it. mud up there, so. No, I could good. go back down and do a horizontal for 10 meters. No, this is this is honestly good enough. It won't give us additional information, but I, I thank you. Anybody else going once? Going twice? Up you go. Roger. Happy with that, Rennie? All good. Setting up for recovery. Roger. I have a question here. What does open gate mean? <laughs> yeah, I missed that one too. So, oops. Well, then let me successfully oh, stop recording we here. We got more cliff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, more cliff. <laughs> Ooh, more targets. Whale fall. Oh, tough. Don't you whale I'm, fall me. I'm used to scientists in the back row, and they're like, they're like little kids in a candy store. Okay, that's it. We must recover the deck. What's that? Can, Ooh, I just, look can, at that. Just, can we just? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, yeah, let's get it back. We, we got all the data we need. And then we have to race to come up to, <laughs> like, if you we know. don't get up on deck on time, you know, that's that's bad. Okay, TJ, uh, I think uh, it's about 
time to go. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come up 50 meters and then go tail to tail. How's that? And yeah, my tether wraps. So you're going to have to turn. Um, is the ship happy on this stream of line forward on this heading? Uh, I think it will be, yeah. So I'll run off to the uh, northeast. I'm going to go off to the northeast and set up for recovery. Because we're going to go tail to tail, right? Yeah, Roger, northeast. Oh, sorry, I'm pulling on you. Uh, I'll come back. Well, you want to turn so you don't put a wrap in the tether? Normally, I wouldn't worry about getting lined up, but we're at 500 meters, and that's about where we usually start streaming. So, 200. Oh, I see what there. the problem is there. Our, I'm going to switch you back over to USBL. Um, uh, oh, we still should have DBL. That's great. Yeah, we, it was just on the wall. We lost it, so um, uh, it was it was wrong, and I got to do that anyway. So. Right, right. So we're okay, TJ. You want to spin around uh, clockwise? I think is that the way we want to go? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you spin the clockwise. Spin towards your turns. It should take the tether turn out. So you see there. So I had to. Um okay, if you uh, click your auto head off there, I can pull you the rest of the way around. Yeah. So I go 100% joy gain here and turn off the uh, Z bias. And uh, give her. Yeah. <laughs> and then I start to uh, give her, being a Canadian term. Yeah. So you guys came down, you know about the tail to tail thing, right? Yep. So um, we kind of balance it here, and I know Robert oh. wanted to do a test. So typically, depending on the weather and circumstances, the best uh, bang for the buck, as it were, to be is to be around 15%, somewhere in the teens on the forward. And that'll keep you tight on the tail to tail and 100% up on the verts. And we should be able to get our advertised 20 meters a minute ascent rate. And we typically do calculate, you know, how long it takes, of course, to get. A little bit better. Uh, so we're minutes. actually getting better now. Uh, we're a lot lighter because we're not full of samples and rocks and stuff. So we're going to get 25 meters a minute there. Uh, Rennie, can you uh, start as soon as you're happy? Uh, yeah, Roger that. I'm just uh, I'm just checking the uh, current from the ADCP. We're at about 500 meters. So right uh, just give me one. <laughs> you talk, you. you. <laughs> You'll have to start streaming for me to get around there, any. Just want to tell you there, we got uh, half an auto current. It's pretty accurate here, so uh, we'll stream forward and you'll be in the good window. Roger. Roger. Is at the moment I'm in the yeah, bad, I see you. You'll bad be right. window. You want me to fly around or are you going to stream it? I'll I stream can do it. both. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. It'll just be a second. Roger.
bridge nav. I'll talk him through it. All right, we are setting up for a recovery right now. Um, we would like to uh, track a line forward at the ship's current heading, speed 0 0.3 knots. And um, let's see, our time to surface is approximately 15 minutes, so I'll call you back for all the uh, you wanna, uh, all the deck stuff. Come on, stop there for a second, Simon. All right, thank you. Sorry, what was that, Dan? Oh, oh I was just good. talking okay. to Simon. Okay. So you can lateral all day with this thing, and you won't you won't get anywhere. So he's going to stream the ship forward, which should put us behind, but we don't have a lot of time, and I don't want to be mucking around, so I'm going to just stop and turn and burn. Uh, if you click on Atalanta, the auto heading in. Uh, right uh, here, I'll help you out. Right here, see my mouse? I'll click it in, you'll see it go on. That guy? So it's on now. So because we're not tight tail to tail, we uh, we click that in just till I get around. Then I'll I'll pull you back around there. Uh, no, hold on. Let me let me get out here in the in the ballpark. That the, move is called in, Dan. Just letting you know. Roger. The other thing, because uh, you're probably used to flying a vehicle where the tether comes out the top. Yeah. Yeah, so you know the gotchas of Yeah, if you get too tight you can't you can't do anything. Alright. So to control Atalanta, uh, we use these plus minus ten degrees, so uh, as I'm clicking you see the little yellow dot going around the compass there. And she's trying pretty hard there as I, I'm pulling it around as well. So uh, I'm gonna, you can click off the auto heading now. We can start coming up. Yeah. And if you go to uh, hotel utility, you get the. Uh, I'm gonna reset my auto heading here. Uh, you get my rate of ascent. So you know I need uh, about oh, no, probably right now 25 meters a minute on the winch to catch up because uh, I'm above you. Negative delta. So the things we're watching here, the two aft cameras can tell where the vehicles are. They should be tail to tail and you should be able to see Hercules and Argus camera all the time for sure. So that's the top right image there. Uh, you can get plus or minus five meters, it's not a big deal, but definitely want to be in there. So if you lose all the rest of it, the other thing, the compasses should be like this all the time. Um, if I pull really hard uh, on Herc, they should line up, but there's been this weird offset where it's not, so. Hey, Dan. Is your auto head is off, yeah, right. Dan? Yes, sir. Launch, re launch recovery salvo. What's that? Launch recovery salvo. Is that okay? Um. Uh, sure. Yeah, that's. We know that's not right. It. I don't know why it does that. It depends on when we fire it up on deck. Sometimes it takes that. Sometimes not. But. Um, if we're What's pushing uh, forward a little bit, our dive number? we don't need auto head dive on. Number H2 uh, zero I'll have one auto one. head on just in case it comes, I'm not paying attention, it comes board. loose, otherwise it'll get wrapped around. But what you got to watch is it swings around as we're going through the water. Uh, one will start working a lot harder because the ship's moving and it's naturally trying to come in. Okay. Yeah. This is one of the gotchas. And then uh, we 
typically look down with the HD camera and rack it all the way back because when it's racked out, it's hanging way out. And like that. I bring uh, porch all the way in. Uh, I make sure the uh, sample trays are, I'll give them an extra bump in so that'll seal them up so that the water inside stays cold and any samples are preserved uh, through the uh, water column. Sometimes we have to hang out at 50 meters to get back behind the boat and the scientists don't like it when their samples are getting warm. And then I will also make sure the uh, manipulators are in a happy place, which that one looks good. That one looks good. Yeah, that's about it. At some point, I'll uh, stop the sonars, because if you power them down and the top side is still looking for it, it uh, eventually will crash the program. This guy can be... Is it the back end that uh, these are the oh, files nice. actually getting ripped off in real time okay. off of the uh, file system? So we basically just have a so all of the storage is on board. Um, so we just have a really simple script that actually just fetches that stuff as it comes coming coming off. And then I'll just be able to start uh, doing the processing just right off the bat off those files. Uh, this thing has to be on. This window has to be active for the. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, for this Thank one, work. just because I didn't want to be messing so Dan, around. Um, yes, sir. I don't know if you guys have in your any an offset for magnetic compass for Atalanta, but it's been about quite a bit off. Um, yeah, we, I believe there is. Okay. It My sometimes is there and sometimes not, which is really strange. Yeah. That's annoying, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's because uh, it's not just here; it's also there. I think it's. I think we're pretty straight, and we are definitely straight. Yeah, yeah. I pulled on it really hard to yeah. try to get it to come around, and it did not. So, might be worth looking into. We have one in one of our any files, but I don't. I think that that's from a prior build of Navest. I don't think it does anything. Um, I think it's. Uh, but but if, if you go through yours and it doesn't work, then I'll try mine as well. So I shall put a note in the log, otherwise I will promptly forget. As as I can I tell you what here. it is in this part of the world if you want. That'd I'll be great. Oh, you're talking about do the declination. Yeah, yeah. Right, so I'll just put Argus uh, Atlantic. Atlantic. How far do you think it's offset? It's offset, I don't know. This one is, is really... That's 10, 20, 30 degrees. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's set for the, you know, far west, you know, when we were in. Uh, it's come and gone, to be honest, Rennie. It's um, yeah. sometimes it's perfect and sometimes it's there. I thought it, I was just telling S Simon that uh, I think it's the way it powers up on deck. Could be. I don't know. Um, Maybe it gets, you know. Yeah. I well, don't I'll know. tell you what it is here because if, if someone has changed it for, let's say, when we were really far west in Papanamakuakea by Midway, that's quite, that would be different from here. Uh, no one has changed it here, I don't think. Okay. Let's, uh, uh, it's 9.5. The declaration? Yeah. yeah. East, so that should be positive. 9.5. if there is an entry for that. I, like I said, I have something in mind, but I, I truly don't think that it's referencing that anymore. I think that was like, an, I was a long time ago where that actually mattered and talked to your top side, but I don't think it does anymore. I don't think it does anymore yeah. either. Too. And even then I asked Howland if that was doing anything and he's like, you don't know it doesn't. He's like, so many things would have to fail for it to reference that. And he's like, I don't even think Ooh. it's connected anymore, so. Hmm. That's that's a Howlandism from a long time ago, not even a modern build. <laughs> right. Or if there's a calibration of the magnetic compass, I don't know. Would it, you know? Uh, there is. Uh, I have the one that we took out of Argus. 
and I've been meaning to, I had it fired up. Mm -hmm. I was going to actually put it in a, um, uh, one of the light housings or something. Oh, okay. Where uh, we run the same ones uh, used to way back in the day on the shilling vehicles in a little light housing, uh, a little tie housing. So, you know, they're not, those Argus bottles are 304 or whatever. It's like magnetic. There it is. And I was going to try and do a cow routine on it so I could, before I try and do it on her. Robert might know. Uh, we got those funny wraps in the uh, in the winch. What's so funny about that? I don't know. I find it funny. <laughs> I find it normal. <laughs> Go ahead, Martina. Thank you. Why is my Dave? Are you still there? Yeah. So why well, don't I not have? I can't pull any winch cameras on my dumb screen here. Sorry, my my simplified screen. <laughs> <coughs> so I have to go to the. Uh, there should be one there, mate. Uh. You're looking to put a winch camera in front of you there? There should be one here. I like to... It's good practice to have the winch yeah. out here. I, I can do it. I have the okay. I have the gizmati over here. Uh, not that one. Uh, but it would be good to have one of these buttons that aren't populated so Robert or other kids can do it that aren't up to speed on the uh, touch screen over there. Okay. It used to be there and then it was, uh, we abused it so I guess it was taken away. <laughs> um, I, I'll put it either here or there, winch out. Um, I tend to forget about it over there in the little quad. You couldn't get away with this with Pelagic, could you? Or can you now? Oh, you can now? Yeah. I went round and round with Ed and Eric. I had a pen in there. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Really? And Ed's all right with that? Really? <laughs> <laughs> Only live series. I had a... Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. I had the so big old, the big old long lever that stuck out the console. I would put a big pin would work and be the right speed. And Ed came in one day and saw that and he, uh, he was really not impressed. <laughs> Really? Nice. Uh, six. Definitely no one's in that. The only one that's clear stretched out, right? You see how it's going to hit me. It was fun. Mm-hmm. You know that when you're on the bottom. Trust. To not trust that. Is he? It's not homeless anymore? Yeah. Where do you buy a house? Well, not. I'll bet. Yeah. Really? Good for him. So I usually um, start paying a little closer attention around 200, 230 meters, and 
I really get the trend here. So as Rennie has previously informed us, we have a current coming uh, that's pushing us over to the good side of the boat. Um, if you do have to cheat it one way or another, it's obviously easier, better to cheat it on the crane side. As you probably saw during launch, depending on what camera you're looking at, it looks like you're way out from the goal post. So the issue is if you're too far out, um, it'll pull Atalanta sideways and we get the tether. It's harder to get Atalanta on the deck or to hook it. Uh, so we try and do a goal and uh, now it's coming back in. If you get, uh, if you're, again, the laterals. Oh, and there's what I warned you about earlier. So just the cycle of that guy. Because um, one will actually start driving backwards. They probably don't need to be on at all now that we're streaming. I'm pretty safe. Now that we're streaming, I don't, I can have auto head off and my, get a little faster speed if I was trying to make time coming up. I'll actually, uh, yeah, I'll slow down a little bit here. Um, yeah, the other gotcha here, so I've seen some people, like, they're just giving it 100% lateral for a long time, and the, the uh, the motor temp is going wherever that is, uh, going through the roof, but also the res will go get dangerously high and wrap the gauge and motor comp will get really high. So I'll, if that happens, um, I'll click it into bypass once we get on the surface. So I'll walk through the, the, uh, the basics are uh, full stick, uh, when they're bringing Atalanta up on, I, I slow down on the on the forward stick a little because I can actually pull Atalanta probably 20 meters. And so when they're bringing it up, you're pinned uh, as soon as Atalanta touches the deck. I ease off on the head and uh, I try to watch the wire cam and keep a little bit of a belly. And uh, you want to come a little faster for me there? I'll slow down. Um, I'm going to go off uh, SPO while I'm jabbering away up here. So, Jonathan, do you want to tell us a little bit about how you feel the dive went and what you're going to be doing with all the data tonight? Um, we started off this dive with a lot of what's called uh, marine snow, uh, which is particulates in the water. Um, could have been krill and a whole bunch of actual life as well. Uh, but what that does is create what's called backscatter. So light hits those objects, all those little tiny things in the water, and it was just creating a big blizzard effect. Mm -hmm. So that, that was totally kind of knocked any thoughts of calibrating systems or even looking at cameras early on mm -hmm. um, and kind of was like the first half of our dive while we were looking for better conditions. Uh, the other thing that happened in the early dive was that one of the cameras started fogging up. Um, that could have been water starting to come in to the lens, but given that we just serviced it, I wasn't worried enough to abort the dive immediately. And indeed, it, it cleared up. Uh, but that, that's another indication of another step we need to do, mm -hmm. uh, which is to re-vacuum down the bottle um, and inspect it thoroughly. And uh, the second half of the dive, we, we came up um, by a couple hundred meters, and we got much better light uh, and are in much better conditions as far as the backscatter. Um, and at that point, um, we found a nice cliff side and we were able to do a single test or two different tests that were really critical for today, which I consider a success. One of those was we tested all the different types of lighting um, scenarios to see which one was best. And what do you think was the best lighting scenario? Or did you come up with a specific one that seemed to be the best or? Um, 
I think that the best one is going to be with, uh, is what we expected, which is yeah. that for really vertical structure, very complex terrain, we only want the forward lights on. Mm -hmm. And if we can get away with it, we don't even want the forward lights on. We actually want to illuminate the entire scene with Argus. Oh. We did that, or I'm sorry, Atalanta, okay. which is our toe sled. Um, and using that as an external lighting platform produced the best results. Because these are very low light cameras. They're very sensitive. Um, and so you don't want too much light because it makes it too uh, white light blown out. It's not that it makes it blown out, it's that it's uneven. Um, so when you have the light really far away, it's it's a softer glow that's evenly illuminating the entire area of, of terrain that you're trying to look at. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, for that matter, it also improves the clarity because your light source, you always want your light source as far away from the camera as possible to avoid backscatter. So, that was just a very ideal condition to test. We had uh, good quality on the rock, and I'll be able to stitch those two images together from the stereo pair and create that 3D look at the world. So I'm predicting you're planning on not sleeping at all these next two weeks. <laughs> Is that true? Like you dive and then data process, stitch photos. For the first couple of days you're at gonna least. You're going to be living off lots of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. For the first couple of days, it, uh, we have a lot to do. But um, the fun part about this project is actually we have a whole host of people helping on the back end. Yeah. And uh, we're learning all of the programs that I'm using to do the processing. and. Um, we're doing manually, and we will over the next couple of days do manually what we will automate by the end of this cruise, which is processing the images and creating the 3D models or creating the big immersive experiences that we're out here to create. So I'm not alone for Control sure. Control all stop at five zero meters. Team effort. Everybody's sitting do down that, in the data break, lab, break, adjusting break, data, break, learning back together. Deck, permission so to go much, ahead so, and retrieve so, so Atalanta and Hercules. And, uh, the only way we'll, we'll be able to do this. Charlie, put it over. Captain. 50 meters. So you were asking earlier about parallax. My favorite analogy for what parallax is, is if you're at home, you can close one of your eyes right now. And if you move your head back and forth, you'll actually see the entire world become 3D, right? You'll see things closer to your eyeball are moving left and right versus things that are far away uh, remain relatively static. So that is what photogrammetry and that process of taking a single picture from a single lens is doing. It's analyzing as you're moving your whole head with one eye closed to the left and right. It's analyzing what it can and can't see. And that's parallax. That's, yeah. that's the relative movement of objects across a frame as you're looking out into the world. Um, I, I love the thought of just everyone sitting at home right now with their eyes closed and moving their one <laughs> eye closed, moving their head back and forth like I was just doing swiveling in my chair here. Yeah. Uh, and that's how your eyeballs work. Um, you know, you have two eyes. And what you're, if you focus with your two eyes at something relatively close, um, you see the world in 3D. Um, that's parallax. It's the parallax between your two eyes. Um, and that's why if control, you have... Control, back deck. If Go you just control. close an eye and you're not moving, you have very poor have eyes on perception. Hercules coming um, up and starting to line up just to port... To tell uh, how far one post. thing is to another is... is uh, uh, roger that on the port side so of the ship. That's because you don't have two eyes. You don't, you don't see the world. You don't have that parallax to be able to make it 3D. Okay. So we're, our technology mirrors biology. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly why we have two cameras sitting yeah. on the front porch right now. So Triclops though has three. So how's that third camera gonna help increase our image quality? So uh, right now if you're looking at Hercules, we, uh, you'll see the two stereo cameras knots. sitting out on the front porch. Yeah, they look so like those, googly eyes popping those out. Those giant googly uh, eyes, yeah, on the front of Hercules, they're only actually looking really in one direction, and that is like straight ahead. Mm -hmm. 
So we get parallax as like a fish is swimming towards those coral. We'll be able to make that fish very 3D that, and, and the process of photogrammetry is you're flying over a cliff or you're going through a canyon. Very appropriate for only looking forward. Yeah. But of course you also want to see what's kind of like, you want to peek down from above mm -hmm. and eventually we'll want to peek behind it. So when you're building the 3D model, it's not just the front of the object, but it's actually the entire object as we're flying the ROV across these worlds. Very cool. Okay, so folks, we're uh, we're about to recover, so let's uh, keep the chatter down on SPL if you would. Thanks. Gotcha. Nice quick ascent.
We have Atalanta back on deck, retrieving her. Copy all. Van, van, back deck. Hercules is 10 meters from the transom. Roger, 10 meters from transom. Past the transom and alongside. Copy that. Control, control, back deck. Hercules is clear of the water. Copy that, and power is secure. Control, control back deck. Hercules has cleared the rail. Clear the rail, Roger. 